I've used this term already, healthy plant metabolism, but now it's time we understand that just a little bit more. So photosynthesis, a miracle. Plants take in carbon, combine it with water, the energy of the sun, and sugars are produced. Carbon energy is available for growth, but also to trade with the biology down in the soil. That whole process of photosynthesis can be efficient or not. Typically, it runs on the order of 15 to 22%. But in truth, we as growers can improve that. And primarily, we do that by making sure that the whole array of trace minerals are available to act as enzyme cofactors, which make metabolism run smoother. We go on from there with, to those sugars being combined with nitrogen to form proteins. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. So we want plants to do that synthesis efficiently as well, so that it's mostly complete proteins being formed, rather than a lot of amino acids floating free in the sap. And the relevance of this is that pests that feed on foliage and fungal diseases that get their nutrients from plant protoplasm from the cell itself are feeding on free-floating amino acids and sugars that have not been complexed into polysaccharides and tucked inside the cell nucleus. What I'm talking about right now is the cell membrane. And the cell membrane is a phospholipid bilayer where complex sugars can pass through and be locked away from the pests and the diseases and where complete proteins are going to be bonded into the bilayer itself. So rather than things for pests and disease to feed on, it's in that cell membrane. Now, if, if we take a step back and, and look at our planet from that same perspective as a single cell, you start to realize that it's in the top few inches of soil where the fungal mycelium acts as that bilayer, protecting life's sacred trust, if you will. Plants go on from there to produce fatty acid compounds. These are the lipids that are stored in the stem and the leaves of the plant. They're available for energy, essentially acting as a reverse gear of biosynthesis during rainy periods when photosynthesis, the sun isn't shining, it's not gonna be as robust, but now the plant has energy to keep its metabolism process going strong so it in turn can keep fungal disease at bay. Fats are also gonna be invested into the waxes on the cuticle of the leaf surface and on the fruit that we're growing. And this in turn is one of the mechanisms by which plants resist rot organisms. Plants go on from there to the fourth leg of, of healthy plant metabolism, which is the production of secondary plant metabolites. I like to refer to these as resistance metabolites. Talking now about the terpenes and the flavonoids and the polyphenol compounds, that plants use to ward off more complex diseases, bacterial diseases, as well as higher order insects, the beetles, um, that aren't feeding so much on the foliage, but directly having an impact on the crop that we're producing. So we want this whole process to be robust because that in turn means our plants are gonna be better able to be resilient in the ecosystem that we're growing them. And to emphasize again, that robustness is in part a result of having reserve energy from getting your nutrients in partially built form, which the mycorrhizal fungi particularly excel at. Bacteria as well. Bacterial metabolites, which include amino acids, are a far more complex form of nutrients than simple nitrate that we put into the soil with chemical fertilizers. So in working with the biology, we have to learn to honor how nature delivers whole foods to the plants that we're growing so they in turn have this really robust plant metabolism. Otherwise we call into play the chemicals, the pesticides, the insecticides, the fungicides that we're utilizing essentially to make up for the fact that there are specific biological and nutrient deficiencies in the cropping system that we're undertaking. Take that to heart.